What's going on my fellow degenerates? Passion here once again bringing you another video with some Overwatch 2 gameplay. So in this video if you read the title, uh, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a personal update on where I've been over the past four years, uh, why I quit Overwatch, and then why I decided to rejoin and come back. So to get things started there were about seven reasons why I primarily stopped playing Overwatch. Uh, and it wasn't so readily apparent if you were watching some of my later Overwatch videos when Overwatch 1 was coming out. Or when Overwatch 1 was like kind of going through not really the end of its life, but more more like getting getting near. Like we're talking probably around 2018-ish, right? Uh, so... Number one, this isn't like, well, it is in order, but it's like not in a particular ranking. I'll get to I'll get to the most impactful thing at the end. But starting off, one of the first things was uh, the new heroes. Um, starting with Doomfist, uh, I was really not intrigued by the new heroes. Uh, not just from a character design standpoint, but also from a gameplay standpoint. Because, especially like with pretty much all the heroes, starting with Doomfist, um, I kind of felt like all the heroes had a bit too high of a skill floor uh, for me. I would, I would get excited for these new heroes coming out, and then when the heroes finally did come out, I get in and play them and find, oh wow, I'm actually shit with this hero. I can't do anything with them. They're too hard for me to play. So all that hype that I had been building up for these new heroes um, went out the window. And to me, like, the heroes just kept getting worse and worse. Um, Doom was kind of, like I say, was kind of the first one that kind of I was really disappointed with. Um, and I think it really hit a new low with Wrecking Ball. Uh, Wrecking Ball was like, I got it and played Wrecking Ball when, when he came out for like the first maybe 10 minutes of, of him coming out and then never wanted to touch him again because I, I just hated his kit, I hated the way he played, I hated the way he looked, like we, we, were, we were hyping up Hammond because we had this whole, it wasn't as big of like an ARG, as like the somber ARG, but we were hyping up this hero uh, based on like all this lore being dropped on Horizon Lunar Colony, and 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 hyping this this Hammond character up to be this like really important, really cool character. And then when he comes out, it's just a hamster in a mech, and it's like it was so disappointing. And to this day, I I still think that Wrecking Ball is probably my least favorite hero in the entire game i hate having to play wrecking ball um although i will admit i recently did just play a game of mystery heroes uh, before getting on to record this where they gave me wrecking ball and to be honest i did kind of pop off on wrecking ball a little bit so maybe he's not as bad as i thought he was but um i will say that when echo came out um i think echo was the last hero to come out for overwatch one um i did kind of enjoy echo a little bit uh, but I, I don't think I really stuck around to see where they took Echo. Um, and again, I think much like the other characters, I think that at, at the beginning for me, Echo was a, still a little bit too hard to play. I did think that she was more visually interesting um, and like lore-wise interesting more than the other characters that had come out. Um, but yeah, after Orisa, like bet between Orisa and Echo, I didn't like a single new hero that they released for Overwatch. Um, so that was one of the contributing factors to me leaving. Um, the second one uh, was the seasonal events started getting stale. Um, and I think that many other people have, have talked about this where I think like especially starting with Winter Wonderland 2017 like people kind of noticed that they weren't putting in as much effort into the um into the seasonal events anymore 
Uh, there weren't as many skins. There weren't as many things to unlock. The things that there were to unlock were not that cool. Um, so I I will say that it, like it, the seasonal events got to the point where like. I, I didn't want to spend money to get loot boxes and open them on the channel because I felt like there wasn't anything cool to unlock. Um, and there wasn't anything to get excited about unlocking in those loot boxes. So that's one thing. Um, a little bonus, I don't actually have this in my notes here, but a little bonus thing that I just thought of, another reason, uh, was the Overwatch League. Um, the Overwatch League, obviously, I was a big Boston Uprising fan, being from Massachusetts. So, big Boston Uprising fan, but to me, like, I just kind of watched the Overwatch League just plummet, like, downhill really quickly, because it basically became, like, Soul at the top of the food chain, and then everyone else fighting for scraps, because it got to the point where, you know, if you weren't a Korean player, like, there was just no chance. And, and the, 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 the quality of gameplay and the disparity between gameplay between what Korean players were doing versus what all the other non-Korean players were doing was, like, wicked high. Um, granted, that there were still some decent games, but, like, you could tell that players who did have Koreans on their team just won more, and players that didn't just lost more. And that was a fact. And ultimately it got to the point where basically every team was just made up of koreans from for for every single team it was just all korean players essentially um and it got to be where i didn't recognize any of the names on not just my home team but any of the teams um it was all just new korean players that i had never heard of um and it felt a bit arbitrary to have them representing, like, you know, these cities and, 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 uh, be representing, like, hometowns and everything, when it was all just a bunch of Korean players who had probably never even been to those areas, let alone, um, you know, done, like, home games or anything there, so, um, so yeah, I, I felt like the, the Overwatch League was a bit of a, a bit of a sham. Um, as it moved forward. Starting out, it was really good, but I think I think it kind of, like, fell off pretty quickly. Uh, the next thing is competitive became too toxic. I have made several guides on this channel about how to combat toxicity. Um, and uh, I've advocated for muting for not muting for playing this way playing that way looking at it this way looking at it that way and it basically i i tried following my own advice and while yes i did have more fun at first uh with like if you uh, if you watch my most recent how to combat toxicity and overwatch guide that i did my most recent one um i think it was called how to fall in love with overwatch again um if you watch that, um, I, I made some uh, points about, you know, like, muting and trying to communicate with, like, the chat wheel and everything, and I I did follow that advice for a while, and, then I, and I did have, quote-unquote, more fun, until you started to see your SR just dropping precipitously right it would just it would just go down with with no hope in sight of climbing back up and it became readily apparent to me that yes while what i was suggesting was more fun it wasn't helping me win and it kind of defeated the purpose of playing competitive so i kind of gave up on competitive after that um moving on so now we're kind of like, that's kind of the problems with Overwatch 1. Um, then we're kind of switching gears into Overwatch 2. So Overwatch 2 was announced, obviously, in 2019. Um, and I watched that that uh, that reveal of Overwatch 2. I don't think I actually, like, tuned into BlizzCon that year, but I did obviously see the coverage of it 
from all the like the gaming press and everything, and I'm like, holy shit, they're making another Overwatch. I didn't think they would do this because Blizzard has like kind of a reputation for um, for really supporting games long term. Like that's why, I mean, yes, World of Warcraft has had many many expansions, but they've never made like a World of Warcraft two, right? And and it's why we haven't seen another StarCraft since like what 2010 so you know it's it, blizzard kind of has this reputation of like supporting games long term so i was kind of shocked that they were like announcing overwatch 2 in 2019 after overwatch 1 had already been out for like three years um so uh, i was hyped for it at first but then people started like asking questions about the game um rumors started, rumors started coming out and the rumors were that I had heard that uh, was progression uh, and all your cosmetics from Overwatch 1 was completely being reset. That unlike Overwatch 1, because Overwatch 2 was going free to play, that there was uh, all, all the previous heroes from Overwatch 1 were going to be locked. And you would have to completely like start over from progression uh, progression level one and just work your way up to unlocking all of those past heroes that you had just enjoyed being a purchasing customer of overwatch um, so uh, I I was a bit like weary about that especially because you guys have seen all the loot box openings I've done I've probably spent close to like five hundred dollars on overwatch loot boxes and all to also think that all my cosmetics were getting thrown out the window like that was that was a bit of a of a hard pill to swallow um another reason why i didn't bother picking up overwatch 2. um and then it kind of came out that all the new heroes like like i believe i think sojourn was the first if i'm not mistaken sojourn was the first new hero to come out with overwatch 2. um I was hearing that, oh, all these new heroes are going to be locked behind the battle pass. So that's going to like split up the player base. And and while this was true um, for a long time, um, I uh, apparently, like fairly recently, they made it so where well, all future heroes are going to be content patches, not, not going to be locked behind the battle pass anymore. Um, so... Um, like Juno, for example, Juno, the new hero that just uh, is coming out with season 12 here, um, not locked behind the battle pass. So, um, but at first, that's what I was hearing, and it was true back then that all these heroes are going to be locked behind the battle pass. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to buy the battle pass and play through the battle pass every time just to unlock the new heroes. Like, that's stupid. Um, then, obviously, another big one was the drama surrounding PvE. Um, Obviously, me being as attached to the lore of Overwatch as I am, uh, I was one of the only YouTubers, like, preaching for this game based on a lore perspective. Uh, so many people and, like, players and, and, and content creators at the time were looking at Overwatch as purely a uh, mechanical game, right? They were looking at the abilities, they were looking at the gameplay, and looking about how to play the game of Overwatch, while most people just kind of ignored the lore. Uh, and that really bothered me. So when I heard that PvE and this big story mode was coming, I, I that was like wicked hype for me. I was super hyped about that. I think that everybody was. That was kind of the main appeal of them making a sequel to Overwatch and why this wasn't just future support of Overwatch 1 is it, because PvE was kind of the whole point, right, of, of Overwatch 2 existing. Um, but then, obviously, I heard, well, it's not going to be launching uh, with the game at launch. Okay, well, that makes me discouraged from checking it out at launch. Um, then I was hearing that, oh, well, it's not coming out for a while. Um, and it actually, believe it or not, it actually wasn't until I actually did pick up the game again that I heard that PvE had been cancelled. Um, which is a shame, because, like, I bought Invasion, I, I played through Overwatch 2 Invasion, I loved it. 
I loved it, and I'm like, please, please give me more. I need more of this. And unfortunately, they've decided that they can't do it. I'm hoping, I'm hoping at some point, like, Blizzard can um, get their shit together and maybe uncancel PvE at some point. I'm holding on a little bit of hope that someday they will come back to it. Um, get, like, a dedicated team for it or something um, that, that isn't, like having to pull people away from developing new heroes, developing cosmetics, developing, you know, balancing and all that, um, and, and, and have a dedicated PvE team for, for Overwatch 2, and bring back those, those hero missions, um, but yeah, at the time, I was just hearing that, oh, it's not gonna launch with the game, so I'm like, well, I was kind of in the same boat as everyone else, it's like, oh, well, this is just Overwatch 1, but with you know, a new hero and a new game mode, essentially. Like, like I didn't see the point. Um, but probably the biggest, 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 biggest thing that pulled me away from Overwatch was the Blizzard sexual harassment lawsuits and McCree's name change. Uh, because I didn't really know how to feel about it uh because obviously like if you guys have watched this channel you know that overwatch has been a really big part of my life and not only hearing that people even within the overwatch team well i guess i guess the overwatch team wasn't as affected by the sexual harassment uh but um but people within blizzard were doing this kind of stuff um I felt, I felt obviously really bad about that, and I felt a bit betrayed by Blizzard. Um, this, this paragon of gaming had just sunk so low with these sexual harassment lawsuits, and on the other hand, though, I also felt at the time like changing McCree's name was a bit of an uh, overreach it was a bit of um like like overcorrecting for for the sexual harassment lawsuits um because i'm sure everybody knows by now but if you didn't the character of, of cole cassidy in game was originally called jesse mccree and he was named after an employee at blizzard who was accused of sexual harassment in one of these sexual harassment lawsuits. Um, but to me, I was kind of on the, the side of, well, this is a fictional character who had nothing to do with these, with, with these women getting harassed. Like, why should he have to change his name just because he, he's named after someone who did something bad? Like, I, I, I didn't see the, the reason for it. I didn't, like, feel like it was necessary i felt like it was a bit of um a bit too far into the into like the social justice warrior kind of overcorrecting um canceling if you will and it just rubbed me the wrong way and that was kind of like the final straw where i'm like i'm done with overwatch um i will say uh, before I get into why I came back, that uh, I have since just grown to accept McCree's name change uh, to Cole Cassidy. I don't particularly like it, but um, I have grown to at least accept it and kind of realize that uh, even if the Overwatch team wasn't super affected, by the sexual harassment that was going on at Blizzard, um, that I'm sure there are some members of the Overwatch team where if they did not change McCree's name, they would have have to been reminded of their fellow employees and the abuse they suffered under the hands of the real Jesse McCree um, every time they worked on the game. And to me, like, that is reason enough for them to actually change the name it's still getting i'm still getting used to it i'll be honest it, it it's a little bit weird but i i think i'm coming around to his name being changed to cole cassidy 
So, uh, why I came back uh, to wrap this up. Um, so, there's been this YouTube channel that I've been following for a long time called Gamers. Um, and they make some of the best, like, editorial content about gaming that I have ever seen on YouTube. Um, I would highly recommend them. And recently they released their Rise and Fall of Overwatch video. And I watched it, and it got me reminiscing about some of my past with the game, as well as brought me kind of up to speed with some of the current controversies that were surrounding with Overwatch 2 and the Overwatch League and all that. So, um, so in that video, it was kind of, kind of ended on a bit of a bad note where they were unsure if Overwatch 2 was going to stick around for too much longer. Um, and hearing that and knowing that Overwatch 2 was free to play, uh, I decided to, I, I realized that I, I had nothing to lose, right? I had nothing to lose by at least trying to play some Overwatch 2. Um, I still was kind of like worried about, you know, everything being locked and all my progress resetting. Um, I was, you know, still a little bit upset about the, about the name change and everything. Um, but I decided to put all that aside, all my preconceived notions about the game, and see if it was truly as bad as this video and everyone was making it out to be. So, I got in, to my surprise, I lost nothing. I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't lose anything. Uh, all the heroes were unlocked um, from day one, which was a relief. Pretty much all my cosmetics were there. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure all the cosmetics that I had unlocked were at least there. I have noticed since I picked up the game again that there are some cosmetics here and there from Overwatch 1, a skin here, like an emote here, a victory pose there, that just didn't get transferred over. Uh, but that was all stuff I had never unlocked anyway, so um, I'm not super worried about it. Um, and the game is just as fun as I remember, and while I'm not sure if I, that can really be attributed to the switch to 5v5, or if some other changes have been implemented during the off period, or maybe I've just gotten to be a better gamer since then, uh, most of the heroes that I was struggling with before uh, as well as all pretty much all the new heroes like they don't seem as mechanically demanding anymore and uh, and I can I can still kind of have fun with them um, even when I'm not like popping off uh, and, and and being super gifted with them uh, they're, they're still fun to play I'm, I've kind of grown more uh, attached to them um, and in the game just just feels a lot smoother now um, and I will say that all pretty much the antithesis of what I was feeling with Overwatch 1 near the end of its life uh, is pretty much how I feel about Overwatch 2. Because all of these new heroes, I'm talking Sojourn, Kiriko, Mauga, um, Juno, like all of these new heroes that there have been releasing since the launch of Overwatch 2, from a design perspective, from a lore perspective, even from a gameplay perspective, they are way more interesting than any of the heroes post Arisa in Overwatch 1. Um, and I have been really enjoying all the new heroes, uh, trying to learn some of them. I'm trying to learn how to play Kiriko, uh, especially. Um, getting a little bit better with Mauga. Uh, Ramatra I'm really liking. Like, Ramatra's becoming like, one of my mains now. Like, so... Um, so, yeah. Um... I've been having having a good time with Overwatch 2, and I am excited to continue to bring you guys more content uh, with Overwatch 2 over the coming months. So we got a whole lot of stuff from Season 12 to cover. Um, I will be doing live streams from my competitive matches. I am going to try to get back into competitive, uh, because I have noticed, uh, playing Overwatch 2, that while the toxicity is still there a little bit, for me, I find like it doesn't actually bother me as much as it used to. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that, you know, that especially if I can find like a pre-made group to go in with, which I'm kind of hoping for, um, that that toxicity will go away and I can have a better time in competitive as well. But 
that's really all I got for you guys today. Remember, guys, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'm Passion. Peace.